The one and only hip hop gamer, Hot 97, Logitech G. Now look, it's not every day you get a chance to talk with someone. That's one of the main reasons why y'all get excited when y'all play video games every day. You want to talk about incredible technology, especially facial animation? I give it up to the one and only, my boy, my brother, P. in a building what's going on baby how you feel hey, son buddy. hey man uh, your, your words are too kind i appreciate it, man it's been a long time we gotta catch up yeah i know there's a lot to catch up on so yo bro let's jump right into it man um face wear for those that's like you know watching this interview right now um uh, that's not aware of face wear and the importance of face wear what face wear brings to the gaming industry and just entertainment overall in all industries break it yep. down let them know who you are and the importance of face wear bro yeah so so our company is built on technology that uh, we use video right so uh we capture actors performances on video and then that is given to an animator to create animation from so uh, we have a whole product line built around that, but we basically sell these tools to film studios, game studios, VR, right? Everything across the board. And as you guys know, in gaming, storytelling is a critical component, mm -hmm. right? And believable characters, believable faces. And so we do that by, you know, giving the motion from a, a real performance, an actor's performance, a celebrity performance, and then give those tools to animators to make, make those performances come to life. Got so, you. We got customers all over the world, 80 countries, you know, thousands of studios, very, very notable things. Um, and it's fun, right? Storytelling is a critical component of entertainment, and we're, we sort of see ourselves as one of those, you know, really important ingredients. Now, absolutely. So one of the questions that I, want, I have for you is how does your technology help grow multiple industries and i give you an example of what i mean right like there's a lot of like for example uh, there, there's uh some interviews that i've done recently with disney and um well i was talking with them about raya and the last dragon you know say that's one of the you know latest movies that yep. came out so it's just interesting to like hear about how people in the movie industry would look at the game industry and vice versa and learn things when it comes to animation and, and how they make things more believable, you know, to the end user. So can you kind of like break down, like how has your technology helped each industry individually grow at the same time? Yeah, so, so there's a commonality between all of these creators, right? Whether you're making a game, a film, you know, a TV show, doesn't matter, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's you're creating content, right? In our space, it's 3D animated content. And so the tools people use across the board are very similar, right? There's a very few tools that, that are really sort of adopted here. And so you, you start to see people that work at a film studio end up working at a game studio and vice versa in this crossover, right? But what's happening right now, you know, and one of the things that COVID has accelerated is the amount of content that's being consumed. Mm, yeah. The scope of games is growing, right? It gets more and more ambitious. They're focusing on fewer franchises, right? Streaming content, right? Between Netflix and Prime and, you know, all, Hulu and all these different platforms, you know, and every network's got their own now. They, they want a lot of streaming animated content. And then you still have, you know, the feature film world, which obviously took a hit with, <clears throat> with COVID, but they're still making films, right? Mm. And so they're trying to find a way, okay, we've used these tools to make content. How do we make it? How do we make more of that? Right, because the, the people making the content, you can only scale that so much. But you've got to use technology, that's where we come in, to try to be more efficient and be faster at how you create content. It's not just a volume game. How fast can I create that? How as a storyteller, how can I iterate quicker, you know, and, and make sure that this is something compelling and engaging and somebody wants to hear it. Mm. You know, so you're seeing this, uh, it's really cool. You know, I've been in this this role in this company 15 years. Like you see over the last decade these this convergence of storytelling tools and then the pool of talent and how they're moving around right and then you see you know game properties that are turning into film properties and and you know this this really interesting thing that's all of these mechanics really helps grow the industry and so as a tool we we see ourselves as super critical to telling a story because when somebody's telling a story they're looking at a face usually <clears> right <throat> Some part of that like of course the character is telling you the story or something like that so you want that to be believable and that comes from emotion and content and you can get the brilliant writers but you still need actors right to act out those performances and then those acting performances are what goes into into that content and that's how it's that's how we can position ourselves across the entire industry and it's it's fascinating man like you just see all these different trends all at once and um 
you know, I'm a fan of all of that, right? It's just, it's so amazing to watch what creative minds can do with technical minds and put them together. And they just, they, it's, it's freaking awesome right now. Yo, it's crazy. Like I, even the, you know, the, the last of us and uncharted movie and like all these other things that's coming, bro. Like I look, I'm very excited just seeing the course brand like that. Uh, so now I got, we about to, we about to go in right now. So I lost my mind, bro. When I seen meta human son, Mm -hmm. Son, yo, Pete, I lost it. I was like, yo, the hair, the tech, like, how? How? This is crazy. So I want to do a quick little deep dive with you when it yep. comes to, um, you know, Epic Games, you know, Unreal Engine, uh, you know, everything. So yep. the first thing I want to say is MetaHumans. Like, what is it all about? What does it mean? How does, you know, face wear technology play a role in this, if any? Break yep. it down for me, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you if you're in our industry and you follow what Unreal has been doing, Epic Epic owns Unreal or Unreal owns Epic, right? It's, yes. it's sort of they 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 make the engine that other people use, right? And so they've been acquiring these technologies over the last few years to make the process easier for game developers and really any developers. You can use Unreal for a lot of different reasons, and so they have a they've long had an initiative on digital humans. How do we make a digital human? And, and, and make that process easy for a creator to create content, mm -hmm. right? Which is sort of the tools aspect of it. So what MetaHuman represents is the ability to, to create very, very believable characters in what used to take months, now it's taking a matter of minutes. It's, it is crazy. And so what's even more powerful is not just that it takes a matter of minutes, you don't have to be that technical, right? And, mm -hmm. and to build a digital human without the metahuman tools takes very very specialized artists they know who they are because they've made an entire career on it and it's an entire process that takes months and it's very expensive and so these these the the creative properties the games the films or whatever that's going they're going to do this are very specialized studios with very specialized people what metahuman represents is tools now that do that it's technology that does that. It's built from a company that Epic acquired called Three Lateral. They're a Serbian company. We know Vlad, their founder, very well. He's a close personal friend of mine. Vlad is a visionary for the industry. And when Epic acquired them, Kim Liberi, the CTO of, of Epic and Unreal, Kim you know, saw this digital human strategy. Vlad has the vision for digital humans. We saw a glimpse of MetaHuman four years ago. Mm. This Make this happen because what he's creating as a tool we know takes very expensive artists a very long amount of time to do, which means you're not going to see it everywhere. So mm. MetaHumans is at a button click. I can create this very, very believable human. And whether that's a celebrity or, or you know, they have it sort of set up in like a character config configurator, right? So I can, you know, change the hair color and skin color and eyebrows, but it all sort of fits within these constraints that it still looks like a human. It doesn't look wrong, right? And it doesn't look uncanny, which some of you guys have heard of that. It's that feeling you get when you look at something, you're like, yeah, it kind of looks, something doesn't feel right about yeah. that. It's not engaging. It's not emotional. Many humans starting to go over that, right? Where you start to see still images and we're watching this blowing up right now. And you see a still image and you're like, is that a meta human? Is that a photo? Like it's starting to get, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like it's starting yeah. to get that. And that's where it's like really connected. Look, and this is day one. And so day one means that it's their, their initial release, they're in early access, and it is so impressive on what they're doing. And so where we sit in is like, okay, assume that now anybody can create a digital human very, very quickly. Well, how do you move it? Like, that's what we're answering. Mm -hmm. The question is, then what? How do you animate that? How do you bring a believable performance into that character that you've created? And we sort of see, you know, we're very complementary to what they're doing. And we, this is across the entire industry. Now, so if a game developer wants to move into the Unreal Engine, if uh, virtual influencers, you see, you know, like Lil Michaela and these things that are sort of up and coming as a virtual influencer, but as a CG character now, yes. like these are where you're going to start to see more and more applications of digital humans. It's really, really exciting. Wow, bro, this is insane, son. Like, yo, I lost my mind when I seen all of this. So now I got, uh, you know, I got some more questions, you know, staying on this particular topic. So one of the big things that people went crazy over was when Xbox uh, revealed the, you know, Series X um, at the Game Awards. And one of the reasons why people went crazy is because it said in engine, not, you know, in game, like gameplay, but it said in engine and they showed off Hellblade 2. 
right? And what I want to ask you, especially based on what we're learning more of today with the meta humans and your face wear technology and Epic and everything as a whole, we do know that Ninja Theory is u- using Unreal Engine to build Hellblade 2 on. So what I, and I asked David Jaffe the same question as well, but I want to ask you, man, um, how realistic is it that we would get that Sensua character model from Hellblade 2? How realistic is it now that that level of detail would be what we actually play and practice when we get the game in our hands? It's coming, right? <laughs> I mean, if you look at the Unreal Engine 5 demo, if you haven't looked at that thing yet, it's insane what they're doing. Because, right, just because I have a really good digital human, that's one part of creating some like a bigger environment, gameplay, all of the things that need to go into the mechanics of creating something. The environment has to look good. The clothing has to look good. The hair has to look good, right? You can't just make one piece stand out. Then it looks weird. Right. So Sin- Sinwa did a really good job, right? The environment's amazing. It's one character. But to grow, you know, you need to be able to create more people more characters, right? You got to have more ability to create that. You need the hardware to come in so that it can play back at the right speed and, and be believable. All of these things are starting to come together. Look at that Unreal 5 demo. It made waves in our industry. It is insane what they're able to do in real time, right? During gameplay. Yes. And so yeah, tools like MetaHuman, where we fit in, we're making that easier. When, as soon as you make it easier as a technical process, then creative people can do their thing. They can get in, in there and really make some really fun things to do and, and be very engaging and very different. You know, the one thing is about creative that is that's right. They think outside the box. They think of different ways to even before. And we're just, just the tools. We're the we're the palette that they paint with. You know. Um, it's coming, man. We see all these things sort of. It's going to take a little bit of time, right? You got to get the things out there. Right. The creators got to get time to get. But man, it's a bright future right now. Now, one of the things that stood out to me a lot is uh, investment that she has been making with Unreal and the fact that Unreal chose the PlayStation 5 to debut, you know, that trailer on and stuff. So, in your, from a hardware standpoint and capability standpoint, is, uh, what, is it safe to say that this that we're uh, in right now with the PS5 and the X that we'll, we'll get a chance maybe, you know, 2022 and 2023 will we saw this real-time game this level, level of detail or if you have something that you may have seen that is yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a process, right, to create this, these things because things have been in the works, you know, general cycle for these projects is two to three years. Okay. Right? Unless it's like a, you know, a Madden or FIFA, those things that are when they come out every year, right? You get the new IP and things like that. There is some crazy amount of content. There's a game we're working on that has like 900 hours of content. It's, wow. It's, it's like, it's so big. Oh. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's, that's what I said, it's coming, man. And so, like, 22, 23, 24, like, like these next couple years, because the tools have been, they've got people like Epic and Unreal and ourselves that are, are trying to make easier. You're doing more and more, right? And the fans love it. You guys stuff up because it's, that's, this. that's why we're in this industry. Yeah, I love it. So now I want to talk to you about the mark for uh, go crazy You're like, like what's going on oh, so talk to me about yeah. it man so 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 in our business right two things really are critical right and creative and technical right creative people are, are artists and animators actors and animators right technical people are, are sort of who's who's using our tool but for us you want a really good acting performance right and so how do you get that right and for us it's motion capture it's the ping pong ball suits but what we've done is a camera, right? So I'm wearing a helmet with a camera that's pointed back on my face. We've been doing that for 10, 12 years. And so what Mark IV is our latest camera to be able to do, do that. And so mm-hmm. from trying to make this more comfortable, you make it com- 
comfortable give a better he's behind the scene you know it just looks crazy you're like how do you perform in that think about it from an actor's point of view how do they get into character how do they visualize who they are what scene they're in what the moment is because all those those things matter and we've engineered it you know we company our, our engineers like uh, his his experience is on set right working with with actors working with directors working with capture design one two if things go wrong it's modular things can be fixed on set an operator can adjust the camera and you have in to, into play when you make a system and so chris has been engineering this for better part of three or four years we were planning on debuting it in march last year the game developers conference obviously oh. a little bit March of so, so we <laughs> slow, slow rolled it out a little bit, but you know what's what we're seeing now, which is crazy, is uh, with this Mark IV is we're able to send this to actors' homes, right? During COVID, people aren't going on the motion capture stage; it wasn't safe, people weren't comfortable, and so what we ended game development doesn't stop, right? So they right. had to shift. They had to shift mentalities and shift um, shift their process, right? So they shifted to actors' homes. So we send the equipment to their home. They're setting it up, or you know, they might have a friend that has a sound or something like that it's it, more people are sort of in a change but wow. you know our system was able to do that we're proud of that it's it's a really fun part of the process to be in part involved in so now i want to ask you a question and i'm a need for me please so i heard something i'll get to you now uh sony they announced their um controllers you know play playstation you know, like however you want to call it, and, and um, I didn't show the system or anything yet. But I heard, heard that the modules that will uh, have have uh, pieces that you can add to the actual VR that we never seen before for home console when it comes to VR. What I want to ask you is: Is there any truth uh, this technology? Um, with, that you have with the Mark IV, uh, technology where you usually capture, uh, and, and, and do acting and everything that you mocap in order to like, from home on your PlayStation like VR two, like the next PlayStation VR uh, uh headset that come out. Is there any truth to that? Uh, place the capability where you can capture those same type of things that you're doing in studio with your actors to, to 3D models and stuff yeah. like that. So unfortunately, I'm not in a position to confirm that. Um, <laughs> but what I can say is that, um, you know, you look at like with the Vive, they just roll a face tracker that you can add on and it sort of tracks your mouth. And, it, you know, this whole thing is like these input devices are trying to get you into the experience more. Right. Right. So it would not surprise me when... Uh, when Sony continues on that track, right? And VR is a better experience when you're involved in it. Gaming is a better experience when you're involved in it. And you're, it's personalized and it's you in there. Uh, we're technology that helps bridge that gap a little bit. But uh, yeah, I can't confirm anything. Okay. All right, cool. I respect that answer. I respect that. I appreciate that. All right, cool. So now I want to deep deeper into the uh, technology because I know COVID was like really crazy for everybody having to make that adjustment. So what I want the ash comes to machine learning and AI and just neural networks, you know, everything that, you know, you see NVIDIA doing this, uh, Sony, they, they have their own and Microsoft with their uh, machine learning. Uh, it's so much stuff out there. What I wanted to ask you is one of the things you spoke about earlier was other things, but now making it move and doing all these other things and calculating data. is machine learning and, and AI. Uh, is, is that anything that helps y'all with y'all face? to make things easier to execute when it comes to all that data? It's a couple of things. easier to execute, but it's scalability, right? Okay. Look at MetaHuman, right? I can now create this of data, this machine learning aspect. I can now create a tool that can create a digital human at the click of a button, right? And now everybody can do that. Right. That's the scalability factor. Right. But the, you know, you get a quality factor too, right. That it move correct, look correct. That's where we come in. So we're, we're sort of use different techniques to do that, whether it's machine learning, deep learning, neural net processing, right. When you, when you start to amass these databases of data and information, mm -hmm. because your company's in this particular area, 
you learn expertise on what's important and then how do you make use of this data to make better technology. And as a tools provider, Boat is Unreal, make a tool make something easier. It um, tools become scalability points, mm. right? And so it, it uh, there's a lot of benefits to that. And look, this technology, like I said, I've been in my company a long time just to see where we were back in 2007 to when I to where we are now. Wow. It's insane how fast this is moving. And what's great is, you know, entertainment in general is a great endpoint and purpose for this research. You got really smart people working on a problem at the right time. You're going to have some great outputs. And uh, that's why I said things are coming. It's, it just keeps better and better. Yo, that's incredible, man. So I got a couple more questions and then we can wrap it up. Well, I mean, more than a couple, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause, you know, out of respect for your time. So the next thing that I wanted to um, speak about is more on the mobile side of things. So, you know, big shout out to, you know, Qualcomm and what they're doing with the Snapdragon, uh, you know, processors and all these phones. Um, what I want to talk to you about is from a, a gaming phone perspective. Now, with all this technology that we're talking about, um, how far off are, are we, or are, are we there? Like, are we on the cusp right now where mobile gaming is going to be able to uh, 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 and, and things on a whole nother level to where we get in these big blockbuster experiences that we do when we want our consoles and PC desktops and stuff like that. We'll be able to get a form of it, uh, you know, on mobile gaming phones. Talk to me, man. So I think what you said is important, a form of it. Right, because okay. mobile experience is very different than, say, a console experience. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't think they're ever going to be one and the same. They're two, they're fundamentally different mediums. Right. It's got a, a clear controller and an input, and I'm staying and staring at a screen. The other, I'm literally holding in my hand. So you, you've got some challenges there. You've got screen space issues, right, with how you sort of orient that game and and, and mm. how you provide the information to people. Um, but there's other experiences that mobile allows for that that console doesn't. And so mm. I, I, you know, I, I, um, I just think it's going to be a different experience. I think the, the phones themselves are obviously getting more powerful. They're getting more capable. Um, but it's just a different type of experience than what you're going to see in gaming. I, I, uh, I just have different aspirations for it in general, you know, for us, like a, not, a, not a lot of big IPs focus on storytelling on mobile titles. Their, right. budgets are, their budgets are storing, they're, you know, they're, they're uh, sorry, they're smaller. You don't get the big cinematic, you know, titles that are porting to mobile at scale. You know, you get a handful that you could point to, but it's, and I think that's because it's a different medium. You know, people are expecting different things uh, from what they're doing there. So it's, it's interesting. I'll say, you know, our focus has largely been on console and PC yeah. and gaming space. Um, <clears throat> we've got a handful of people doing mobile titles, but it's really hard, right? I mean, you, you've got a different level of processing power to work with. And so, you know, most people aren't putting that processing power into character animation, you know, they, they go, they go elsewhere. So, um, there's good, good things. The whole industry is benefiting from all of this technology being progressed so fast. Now, absolutely. The reason I asked the question regarding uh, uh, the gaming phones is because when you look at what xCloud is doing, you know what I'm saying, and how you could play these big blockbuster games on your phone on the go, even though it's through the cloud, like all these things is getting better. So because of this extension of what you would get on a console and a PC and continuing the gameplay on your gaming phone and all this other stuff, features that standpoint the more people you utilize that and the more people get comfortable with that because they even got you know you give you use your controller on your mobile phone you know what i'm saying you know with bluetooth so because of all these things it's like i didn't even think that i can have this experience on my phone but now that i can the market may open up to it that's why i frame it, it, the question like that yeah it Definitely can, right? I mean, it's going to take the right type of game to get enough users for a game developer and a publisher to be like, yeah, let's do that, like with that experience. But it's, um, you know, I, I only speak from personal experience, right? We're, we just don't have a lot of people doing mobile games with our technology right now. No, so I understand. We're sort of adjacent to it, you know, as an industry, but it's, um, yeah, just I, I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, no, I get you. I get you. No, it's a perfect answer. I understand it. Um, I was just intrigued by the growth 
and you know mobile gaming and where gaming phones is about to go and just the stuff that we thought couldn't happen before that's happening now that at one point in time we was like this has never happened and then, yeah, you know what I'm saying it's happening yeah, so it, it continues to happen i think it's going to go at a little slower pace than some of the innovations you're going and it, it goes to processing power you know yeah but you know people create you know some of these mobile games are insane right yeah the millions of players you instantly have access to the distribution right i mean you can get it out there so quickly um and that revenue drives everything right that's how the, the world of revolves <laughs> around money whether we like it or not and so absolutely if i you know if i can create a, a gaming experience and and bring a massive ass community in there and and really build it engaging people are going to come right? yeah and so that was it'll move it, things faster to me so now, now one of the things uh you know a couple of wrap it up uh one of the things that really really to me just from a game development standpoint and the tools and everything that you know you've been uh, talking about when i look at god of war or when i look at you know last of us and tsushima like a lot of these games and the, and the emotion the facial you know just what y'all doing with this how does so i have a program called gaming and guidance and be surprised at how many kids and how many people in general is they want to do this, you know what I mean? They want to, you know, do this, develop, and just, you know, utilize their creativity in this. So what I wanted to ask you is, um, do y'all have like a whole pipeline that can allow, you know, people to get involved to start creating their own things or, you know, let's say they brought uh, so they could use it for themselves and study and learn and build their own things. Like, mm -hmm. do anything in place the average system to, to get involved right in the trade. You got to an engineer, you got to, you know, you got to get in touch with the tools that they use because that's ultimately what you're going to do to get your job done. And real as an engine, right? You can look at Unity as another great engine, right? They've got classes, they've got things like that. You can download that, get it on your computer, start playing around with it figure out a project and just make something right as an encouragement. I mean, you th see things like what Roblox is doing is super interesting yeah. to get people engaged, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, like we, we sell to a ton of schools, right? We got 200 something schools using our tools that have game design programs, game development programs, get into those, get experience, get networking, start meeting people, right? And have ambition and have no ego, right? Just go in there and get the job done and and you'll be fine man there's 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 plenty of, you know there's plenty of things and opportunities it is a re legitimate industry i mean gaming's much bigger than any other form of entertainment Absolutely. and that's why you're seeing and that's why you're seeing these classes pop up online you know and in where you see the, the 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 academic programs and then a lot of these academic programs feed into specific game development studios right i know mm. if they go through this program they're going to have these skills so you know it's it's an easier bet but you know if you want to start without before you even go to school like just start learning these tools right? Maya, Photoshop, Unreal, Unity, right? The, the tools that people are using in their daily lives and just make projects, just make stuff, right? Because that's what a creator needs to do. They got to create. And these tools are becoming a hell of a lot easier to use than they were a few years ago. Got you. Now, personal, personal question. What was your, um, one of your favorite games growing up when you was a kid? That's one. And then the second part of that question is, out of the latest games that has come out now and your expertise in facial animation and tech and stuff like that, what's the most impressive uh, game in terms of graphics, you know, facial animation and things of that nature? What's the most impressive game that you've seen uh, thus far? And also, you know, the uh, one of your favorite games you played growing up all the time? Yeah, man. So I, so I grew <laughs> up in 8-bit in land, right? We grew up in, in Nintendo and, in, in, you know, like six was the thing at one point in time so we you know i i cut my teeth on uh tecmo super bowl and some of these old mike tyson's punch out right some of these old old games and um you know i got into ncaa right when it when it really was in it hit its prime i'm very excited about the college football now yes i think that, Spin a I chain think on that one let's I go think that's huge i'm very excited for whatever that's going to turn into in the next whenever they release that right <laughs> Um, you know, for, for right now, I, you know, we look at our, you know, I'm very proud of our customers and the people that are using our games, right? I mean, you look at like what Horizon's done, right? Uh, is a really cool IP. FIFA, Madden every year, right? They're just stalwarts. Uh, the next WWE, 
so I'm always a fan of our customers, right? I am. I'm not a gamer. I, I've got less time. I got a two year old boy. Since since we talked, I got a. I got a oh, family, congratulations, so. bro! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. So, so my, my little boy, he's taking up all my time, man. But um, <laughs> it's exciting time. It really is, you know. Uh, if, if anybody hasn't checked out the Unreal 5 demo, just go and look at it. You'll get a glimpse of what's coming. It is insane. So for the final, so for the, to wrap it up and stuff like that, one of the big things that everybody's talking about is uh, NVIDIA's DLSS and uh, AMD's soon-to-be released Super Resolution uh, method you know for um you know games and i'm blown away because to be able to play a game rendered at 1080p and the output looks better than a native 4k image i was done floored frame rate high out blown away so i've been an extremely hardcore advocate like for this so there was reports that the unreal engine demo that we saw was 1440p but that joint looked like, like, how, how do you do that? So my question to you, when it comes to that technology, uh, how does this change the game for someone like yourself with the face wear? Because a lot of times the resources, companies may not have the resources to even pull off things that, that level of realistic, that, that level of detail and density in their world and stuff. But now with this technology, it's like it saves so much on processing power because the way it's offloaded and handled. So my question to you is, how does this make for better games considering the power that's being saved, but you still able to achieve your goals? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta think about it from sort of just the basics of it. What does it represent? It's the foundation of what you're building upon, right? Or what you're building for. It's the racetrack, mm -hmm. right? So now you got a better racetrack. Well, let's go make a race car that can then can go around this racetrack faster and win right mm. and so we look at ourselves as an engine in that equation right we're a, we're a better engine to get you there you still got to build the car and then you got to go out and take it on the track right but now you've got a better track to perform on so the performance mm. is going to be better right and then i can push my race car a lot far farther right but i got to put in the right fuel i got to have the right driver it's all of these ingredients that matter and, you know, the good thing is, is all these different elements are playing together nicely. We're well established. You know, our companies have been around longer and longer and longer and, and they're more mature. Right? And because of that, and we all play nicely, then creators can create. And that's that's, you know, the, what the moves that NVIDIA is making right year in, year out. They continue to get better and better and better. You got really, really smart, an army of engineers working on this problem. And you get the right people working on the right problem at the right time. Things are things are magical, man. It's that's that's what's entertainment. That's so. crazy. So look, man, I'm gonna let you go. Is there anything you wanna you know say to the fans and share with them about what's coming next and what they can look forward to, you know, in the game industry period with the tools that people are using that you provide before we get out of here? Yeah, I mean, look, look at MetaHuman. We're going to have a huge push in MetaHuman because we think digital humans are really going to help with storytelling. Look, man, I, I've always appreciated you because you approach it from you're sort of the uh, the Rosetta Stone, man. You're 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 translating the you're translating the technology and the tools into language that that the gaming community can understand, and not a lot of people take that angle. And I really appreciate it because you got to get the word out, people, because the gaming community is creating the demand. Right. You guys want the best experiences. You demand it. You're very vocal in a good way. Right. If something sucks, it sucks. Call it out. Right. Yes. And if it's not and it's great, you guys give it praise, too. But the community itself, like where I'm the industries we work in, like we we care about that. But we're sort of heads down on the problem, on the engineering problem. You know, and so it's great. You know, I love talking to you, man. We get a good gl glimpse into sort of what you're seeing, what's interesting to you, the questions you're asking. In my head, I'm taking note of all of those because <laughs> these these are some of these things I'm not paying attention to. We got other things that are that are out here spinning, but man, it's it's an exciting time. I really appreciate the time to catch up, man. I think it's it's probably been four or five years. So yeah, it's been too long, man. Yo, yeah. I thank you so much, Pete. When I tell you, man, like you know, I'm a fan. I'm a friend. And I consider myself a brother with you, bro. I've known you for so long now. Like we have a long history. And I just want I just want the audience to understand that we go crazy over the end result, but yep. you gotta have a passion for the process. That's so right. whenever I speak to Pete, it's a constant reminder of why I love what I do. Cause my grandmother taught me how to play video games. You understand? So my thing is my passion is so well connected. So when I speak to people like you, Pete, it literally 
means everything to me. So I love you. I thank you. Keep working because we love it. We need it. And we always going to push the whole industry forward and we could do it together. So thank awesome, you man. so much, bro. So Appreciate face wear, time. baby. Face you, wear. Too. Make sure yeah. y'all check them out. The Mark IV. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you check it out. One love and God bless. And on that note, it's the one and only hip hop gamer, Logitech G, on your hot 97 every day. That's my word. Pete Bush, number one. We out of here. Peace.